The fall of Enugu was a military conflict between Nigerian and Biafran forces. Enugu was invaded after the Biafran retreat from the Midwestern region only 14 days earlier after the Nigerian 2nd and 3rd Marine Divisions cleared them from the area. Chapter 1 Background In the late 1960s ethnic tensions rose dramatically in Nigeria. Many Igbo people of eastern Nigeria feared domination and discrimination from other ethnic groups. In September 1966 soldiers of the Nigerian armed forces inflicted a series of massacres against Easterners residing in the northern portion of the country, triggering the flight of thousands more to the eastern city of Enugu. On 30 May 1967, Nigeria's eastern region declared that it was seceding from the country to become the independent state of Biafra. Enugu was made Biafra's capital, and the state was led by the former eastern region military governor, Lieutenant Colonel Odumegwu Ojuku. The Nigerian government planned to suppress the secession in a four-phase operation that would last one month. Their first major goal was to secure Enugu and Sukkur. On 6 July Nigerian federal troops launched their offensive to recapture Biafra, initiating the Nigerian civil war. Federal officials initially declared that their forces would seize Enugu in 48 hours, but the conflict soon developed into a stalemate, with heavy fighting taking place near Nsukka. At the start of the war, Enugu was home to almost 140,000 residents, mostly Christian Igbos. Once conflict broke out, they started leaving the city in search of refuge deeper in Biafran territory. Foreign nationals were advised by their own government to leave Biafra, and by late July only about 50, most of them journalists, arms dealers, diplomats, and traders, remained in Enugu. Chapter 2 Prelude When Sukkur fell to the Nigerian 1st and 2nd Brigades, Ojuku knew that his capital would be the Nigerians' next target. In an attempt to distract federal attention away from Enugu, Ojuku ordered an invasion of Nigeria's Midwestern region. Biafran troops began their offensive in August and made steady progress, capturing Benin City and nearly coming within 100 miles of Lagos before being halted at all. Federal forces were reinforced by red-ploying troops from the Nsukka Front, delaying progress on the attempt to capture Enugu. The Nigerian 2nd Infantry Division led a counter-offensive in the Midwestern region, and by late September had recaptured Benin City. The commander of Nigerian troops stationed in Sukkur, General Mohamed Shuwa, was relieved of his command and replaced with Lieutenant Colonel Theophilus Danjuma. The Biafran 53 Brigade under Colonel Alexander Madibo, the newly appointed head of the Biafran army, was tasked with defending Enugu, but the unit had been exhausted by previous engagements and was unable to call upon reinforcements. In an attempt to bolster the city's defense, Ojuku ordered all able-bodied men mobilized in Biafra. Approximately 10,000 arrived in the capital. Aside from a handful of Dane guns in their possession, the men were unarmed and the Biafran administration struggled to feed them. According to Madibo, Ojuku intended to equip them with machetes and move them through Eek from where they would swarm federal troops at Abor. Madibo doubted the plan's feasibility. In contrast to the motley defenders of Biafra's capital, the unit tasked with attacking Enugu, the 1st Division, was the most experienced force in the Nigerian army. It included large numbers of World War II veterans. Chapter 3 Nigerian Offensive Nigerian forces in the Nsukka area began advancing in earnest towards Onenugu on 12 September. Biafran forces counter attacked but by the latter portion of the month were in retreat. By the end of September, Enugu was within shelling range, federal artillery began bombarding the capital on 26 September. The Nigerian Air Force also raided the city, temporarily forcing Biafran radio offline. Just after midnight on 1 October, Ojuku delivered a speech over radio pledging not to abandon the city. On 3 October, the Biafrans began evacuating Enugu. On 4 October, federal air and ground forces attacked the city. Ojuku was asleep in the Biafran State House when the federal troops attacked, 
and awoke at the sound of gunfire and mortar explosions to find the building deserted of his guards and aides and surrounded by the federal forces. Disguising himself as a servant, he was able to walk past the cordon without incident and escape. The Nigerian 1st Division successfully occupied the city. Chapter 4 Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1 Situation in Enugu Danjuma described the fall of Enugu as an anticlimax. His troops garrisoned the city in the immediate aftermath of the battle, while Upabi Asika, an Igbo professor at Ibadan University, was appointed to lead the civil administration in the locale and surrounding areas held by federal forces. The Nigerians seized one Biafran Douglas A-26 invader. After its capture, buildings in Enugu were ransacked by looters and federal troops, including the Presidential Hotel and the United States Consulate. The vast majority of the population fled, and only approximately 500 civilians remained, most too ill, old, or young to leave. Nigerian federal officials unsuccessfully appealed for residents to return to the area. Over a year after the battle, the city remained mostly deserted, and of the few hundred civilians in Enugu most were being sheltered and cared for by Catholic missions. The International Red Cross established a station in the locale, and used it to direct the distribution of relief supplies to the surrounding area. As late as 1978, signs of damage from the battle remained in the city. Chapter 4 Section 2 Course of the War Many Nigerians hoped that Enugu's capture would convince the Igbo's traditional elite to end their support for secession, even if Ojuku did not follow them. The 1st Division halted its operations at Enugu to rest and resupply and let Ojuku consider abandoning the rebellion. This did not occur, Ojuku relocated his government without difficulty to Umuahia, a city positioned deep within traditional Igbo territory. The fall of Enugu contributed to a brief destabilization of Biafran propaganda efforts, as the forced relocation of personnel left the Ministry of Information disorganized and the federal forces' success undermined previous Biafran assertions that the Nigerian state could not withstand a protracted war. On 23 October the Biafran official radio declared in a broadcast that Ojuku promised to continue resisting the federal government, and that he attributed the loss of Enugu to subversive actions. Biafran radio moved its broadcasting station several times throughout the war, but would often pretend that it was still headquartered in Enugu to maintain morale. As a result, many Biafrans were not aware of the city's capture until the end of the war. The federal forces pressed on with their offensive throughout the month, securing Asaba and Calibre, further encircling Biafra. Umuahia was not taken by Nigerian government troops until the 22nd of April 1969. Chapter 5 Works Cited. 